Hi uh, guys, I know it's getting late, so try and get through this together. Um, I'm representing Adobe. Uh, I work there as a front end engineer. So I have to give our shameless plug since we're hosting for funding Prez Meetup. Um, funding? Cool. Yes, sponsoring, that's the correct word. Uh, but we are, have actually been using Vue in production for about the past six months. Uh, it's been really a pleasure to work with, which is part of the reason why we decided to sponsor this meetup. Um, so feel free to grab me or any of my coworkers. You can raise your hands, guys, over in the corner, and we can answer any questions that you guys might have about using Vue uh, in production. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about Storybook, uh, which originally was a style guide generator for React components, but recently, as of July 31st, so it's less than a month old, um, has been enabled for Vue as well. And so this, uh, do we have any designers here, ex-designers? I'll take it. Okay, so you guys already know all about style guides. You can zone out for the next five minutes while I sell these people on style guides. Uh, <laughs> I'm, in a past life, I was a designer. Um, and my favorite thing to do is branding. I loved putting together these brand books. It was one of my favorite projects to do. Uh, but this is basically the OG of style guides. And now that we've kind of moved into uh, more brands being on digital presence, we have most of your branding happening on a digital platform. Obviously, you want to create these style guides for your websites, your apps, everything else. Uh, which gets us into living style guides, which is something we could only really do when we start having component-based frameworks such as React. And the idea is that you have less duplication of code and styles because you don't have a separate repo for your style guide and then one for your production code. You are actually pulling production components into your style guide. This creates more accurate documentation of code in your design standards because they should be one-to-one -one and should stay in sync as you update and develop your site. Um, these are incredibly useful for screenshot and isolated component testing as well. And like any other style guide, they're just a really good communication tool between design and development. Um, so that being said, uh, Vue Storybook and using React with Storybook is a living style guide. It's a component-based style guide, uh, but that's not always been the case in front of development. So come take a walk with me as we go down memory lane for some of the other style guides I've used over the years. <laughs> um, I wish my old coworker Sergey was here because back when I worked at NBC, we used Pattern Lab about six years ago. This was groundbreaking at the time because it actually had atomic components, is what they're called, at a hierarchy. We also had the Drupal project style guide, which I couldn't decide if I hated more because of the style guide framework or because it used Drupal. Um, <laughs> then when I started using React, uh, we decided to just roll our own one. Uh, so I've been using basically custom style guides that I've built uh, for the past couple years because we always kind of had the Goldilocks problem looking at frameworks for style guides. Um, it was either too much, too rigid, the style kind of sucked, to be honest. I'm, I'm still a designer at heart. If it's a bad design, I'm not going to use it. Um, or and it was just too clunky and too heavy to use on the site, or it was too little, and you kind of wondered why you were importing it in the first place. You might as well just roll your own. So I wound up creating a lot of custom ones where at Bitly, a previous job, and now at Behance uh, for our view components, where we basically just would import our components straight onto the page, put some build scripts, put a wrapper around it, and call it a day. Um, which brings us to Vue Storybook. So putting to get, when I saw that that came out, uh, I had a few people let me know about it. And so of course I'm like, I need to go check this out because it's the new hotness this week. Um, <laughs> so created a, started working through a demo and I actually really loved it. I feel like this is a really nice compromise. Um, so the setup is incredibly short, which is something you've noticed throughout these Vue talks is that there's really, it's really easy, it just works. You run these three commands into an existing Vue project and you get your storybook. Um, but some of us are special snowflakes and need to write the config ourselves. So if you're one of those people, uh, you can also do the long version, which you register your components by hand using Vue component. You install your plugins if you want to use something like Vue to write actions um, using Vue.use. And then you just need to require the stories yourself by hand. But even that really isn't that bad. So I put together a short little demo, partially just to put this through its paces and partially to have something to show you guys. So I decided to go with a theme. So here's my library of stories. You can, you can laugh, it's okay. <laughs> um, so we have our bookshelf component and then a few books within it. Uh, and this is what the actual storybook would look like. We have a navigation on the side, um, which drops open, you can see this component being put through its paces right here. Uh, it has a kind of rudimentary filter, which is really useful when you have more than two components. Um, here's the staging area for the actual components. And then we'll talk about this third panel a little bit later. Uh, so this is really incredibly easy to use. 
This is our config file. Since I use the default version, this is, this is it. Um, there's really not much else to show. <laughs> you import a few things. Uh, I say where my stories are located. If you work for a brand such as NBC, where you have a bunch of children brands underneath the title parent brand, you could even create um, extra stories and just wherever you decide to store them. You could create storybooks for each of your brands, for each of your situations, whatever you need. Um, and then within the actual, uh, the actual stories are located in your source. So I have my stories file right here, which is right next to my components. Um, and in the documentation, it shows that you, they put components actually in the stories, which doesn't quite make sense to me. If you're making a true living style guide, you should just import the components you already have. So that's pretty easy to do, which is what, exactly what I did. I'm importing my components from my source, um, adding some mock data in there, just so I, my components have something to ingest. And then this is kind of the meat and potatoes right here. Uh, this is how you write a story. It has your top level navigation where you declare exactly what component you're dealing with. Um, and then here's your story. I'm adding the active state for my book component. And when I create a style guide, I normally go through, especially with components like this, where you just add props um, and take each prop, put it through its kind of paces. So change each of these. And that should add, if I do this correctly, I should now have a new one. Guys, I decided to go renegade and actually do live coding. This might be a disaster. <laughs> uh, I know, right? You never do that. So now we're taking a look at kicking this back up because I had it closed. Uh, so if you want to run your storybooks, this is exactly how you do it. You might just need to recompile and a kick because I shut my laptop off in between this. Oh. You're right. There we go. And now I have my inactive version. Team coding, guys. It's a skill. <laughs> um, so then if I decide, another nice thing is that maybe your components are a little more complex than this. Maybe you need a secondary level of navigation. Uh, I really love the way that these guys decide to do this. Um, so they actually did it as more of a URL structure. So I can actually go through and just backslash like a normal URL. I have my special components here. Do my not special ones over here. Save it. And then I should see this refresh. And there we go. We have our special ones, our not special ones. Um, and so you get kind of a secondary level navigation so you can create this really robust directory structure for your components as well, which is really nice. Um, and so, Back to our presentation. Uh, so I talked a little bit. Um, and another nice thing that you notice is that it has a URL as well. You can deep link into each of these components. So even when you have two levels of navigation, you can go directly into the component you want, email that link to someone, Slack that link to someone, um, which makes it really nice for collaboration. And you can definitely tell the people designing this definitely kept that at the forefront of their mind. Um, another thing you can do is you can export this as a static app in case you're working with designers or um, business people who for some reason don't want to set up a local environment for this. I can't imagine why. Um, you can give them a static app and you just run a build script for it, which I actually did and it's available on my GitHub uh, under the GitHub pages if you want to check that out. Um, they also have uh, this built up for testing as well. Their suggestions are that you use story shots, which is just a just integration for storybook and interaction. You can use enzyme, but as you saw, there's really not much to it. Um, so you could definitely layer over any other testing framework that you're already using. And then this is an add-on, which we're gonna talk about shortly, uh, but this is one of my favorite ones for testing. So this one will literally put in the panel whether or not your component is passing its unit tests, which as you can imagine would be super helpful when working with other teams or designers, or just even seeing what kind of state your app is in currently. And so add-ons are basically just additional functionality for the preview area, the third area I was pointing out, and they give you the ability to write custom add-ons, but the view does provide an entire gallery of add-ons that are maintained by the team at Storybook, um, which are definitely worth checking out. And so I was gonna show some of my favorite add-ons. One of them is Actions, which allows you to output um, the result of different actions on your component. And 
Here's my other one, knobs. Um, this one is really cool. It basically allows you to turn any of your properties of your components into input fields, checkboxes, um, things like that, so you can see how they react to different data and change the input of your component on the fly, which as you can imagine would be very useful. Um, and then the last one is info, which is something I always mean to implement on my own style guides that I've built. And it's essentially just a place to put documentation, notes, code samples, and how to use the component. And then decorators are not currently available for view, um, but they are coming soon. As of right now, there's a PR open for them. They're essentially just a wrapper component that you put around your component in view storybook, and which is pretty straightforward. It's for things like putting a dark background on a, white, on a light component. It's for centering things. And this, is, this example is all there really is to it. It's very easy to write your own, um, but there's also ones that are available for import as well in the open source community. And so in summary, uh, the reason why I liked View Storybook is really just the simplicity of it. Uh, it's incredibly simple to use, but it has enough customization, enough power to it that you can really build this up into something that's very full featured. It also allows for real time feedback, especially when you start adding it in um, things like knobs and some of these add-ons. It has a built in way of unit testing your UI uh, to a degree that you don't get from a lot of other uh, style guides and storybook frameworks. And also, like any other good style guide, it really removes the mental overhead and helps you with collaborating with other teams uh, while developing a site and aids in communication, which overall just makes for a stronger site.